We are so delighted to have Bishop Harry Jackson Jr. with us. He is from the Washington, D.C. area, Pastors yes. Hope Christian Church, a church of several thousand people in College Park, Maryland, just yes. a suburb of D.C. He has an earned MBA from Harvard University. Now, you got to be pretty smart to even get into Harvard, much less earn uh, a graduate degree. Yeah. And he is one of the ones heading up uh, the great event tomorrow night at the Potter's House in Dallas called the Reconciled Church. Please join Joni and me as we welcome him back to the program, Bishop Harry Jackson, Jr. Okay. And so, how hard was it at Harvard? How hard was it? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> it was uh, a little bit difficult. <laughs> you do have a lot of smart people there, amazing diversity, and uh, but it was what a, a tremendous privilege, I'll say. Did you ever stay there. up all night studying for tests? Uh, yes. <laughs> wow. I'm sure. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> Many nights. Before we get into oh, this wow. uh, reconciliation, which is such an important topic, and we're so glad you're here today, okay. give us an update on you and your health, because you're quite a miracle to be sitting there. Yes. Well, I am cancer-free today. Praise the Lord. Yes. my wife as well. Yeah. So you both went through it. Yeah. She had a blood cancer, a rare kind of multiple myeloma is what it's called. Wow. And I, have a, I had a esophageal cancer, and uh, it claims 85 to 90% of the people who are diagnosed with it within months. And now, way past the five-year mark, I'm finally back to, you know, real energy and, and strength. So I'm thanking God. That's awesome. All right, so let's talk about the event tomorrow. What's going to happen, and who are some of the people involved? Well, the evening services are going to be absolutely phenomenal, but in the morning, we're going to have approximately 116 leaders uh, who are coming together, and we're creating bridges to peace. You know what's happened in Ferguson, Missouri, Staten Island. There are a lot of racial tensions now, but we believe that it's not just police brutality but that in America right now, we have a class, poverty, and then a race problem. Wow. And at the root of it all, the church can come together yes. and be the healing agent and lead the way. Essentially, we're going to say to the nation uh, that we want to own our own separation. We're coming together. And then we want those who care to see America healed come along with us. So we'll ask the president to address this. Um, we'll go into the details in just a moment, but uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes and James Robinson are the real key guys that have worked with me to pull this event together. It's not just the event, it's a movement. And then Robert Morris, Jack Graham are involved, the head of the National Association of Evangelicals, Leith Anderson, 38 million uh, members strong are going to be there. Uh, Bishop Paul Morton, Bishop Waldker from the uh, Full Gospel Baptist Movement. We have uh, Vashti McKenzie from the AME, Zion, or no, AME movement. And so from black, white, Hispanic, uh, Sammy Rodriguez, uh, a great leader in the Hispanic community. So we're all coming together and saying, essentially, stop the madness. Let's heal the divide. And I believe God's going to do something in us, Marcus. And uh, we're thankful for your support and the big role that you're playing in getting the word out and helping people come together. You know, Joni and I have a great appreciation about all of this. I think, one, because... We are a slightly younger generation. We went to integrated schools. And so to me, I didn't understand about prejudice because I wasn't raised that way. But I do know that the generation before us that are still alive, they were. Yeah. And it's just become almost like a habit to them because that's the way they were taught and the way they were raised. And then we started our television ministry in Montgomery, Alabama, which is wow. so... 
significant for the civil rights movement. Of course, where yeah. Dr. Martin Luther King did the famous march from Selma to Montgomery. He pastored the Dexter Avenue uh, Memorial Baptist Church. We had Dr. Murray Branch on, who was the then pastor at that time. And of course, when we first went there, George Wallace was governor, and he was the one that stood in the doorway of the University of Alabama with the National Guard and wouldn't let uh, black students enter into the college. But let me tell you this, this is good. After we were on there a while, we received an invitation from Governor Wallace, Joni and me, to come and see him at the state capitol. The state legislature was in session, so the senators and the state representatives were lying in the hallways, wanting an audience with the governor. Here's little Marcus and Joni Lamb in mm -hmm. our 20s with the little fledgling Christian TV station marching in to see the governor. And Governor Wallace said many nice things to Joni and me, but then he began to cry. And he said, please tell people that I'm no longer a segregationist. And he said the turning point was right there close to where you live when Arthur Brimmer attempted to assassinate George Wallace. He was running for president. I guess that was 72, 68 or 72, whatever that was. And he became paralyzed from the waist down. He said, I, my life changed, my heart changed. So God can change even the meanest, hardest, vile person. And I'm not saying George Wallace was that, but a lot of people would say he was before he met the Lord. So here's my question. I know that we have made a lot of strides of improvement. And I think because of that, some people think, well, that's good enough, or we've done, everything's okay, but it really isn't. And then I also think that there's a lot of us that we don't know what to say, but just because we don't know what to say doesn't mean we shouldn't say something. Yes. So Bishop Harry Jackson Jr., here's the twofold question. Number one, what can we say and do as individual Christians? And number two, what can leaders like pastors of churches do to make things better in our country? Great question. First of all, don't receive the need for this movement as though someone is blaming you if you're white. The reality is the anger that you're hearing is out of hopelessness, is out of discouragement. Yes. Folks have been shut out of the system, sometimes because of dysfunction in their own families, where they've been brought up. And it's essentially this. It's as though many minorities, black and brown, have been wounded, and they now are carrying a permanent kind of disability. And if it was a physical case, we'd cry out to Jesus and say, heal us, dear Lord. Yes. And I believe that's the way we should see it. So let me talk a little bit about the dynamic, seven bridges to peace. We're going to focus specifically on four of them in this event uh, tomorrow, but education reform criminal justice reform are critical. Uh, there's also an amazing need for us to deal with economic development so people can get a job. Think about it like this. If you cannot read by the third grade, read well. If you're black or brown, three quarters of our prisons are filled with black and brown people. Wow. You're likely as a young man going to wind up in trouble with the law, go to jail. So not being able to read at the third grade is a huge problem. And number two, if now, after you can't read, you find yourself not being able to get a job, you wound up in jail, you kill back, you can't vote, you can't reenter society, you can't get education late in life. So this is as much a class problem as it's a race problem. So the church can do the following. I believe we can come together and learn more of each other. Yes. And that church pastors have to help lead that a little bit. That's right. They have to model it and demonstrate it. We have they? to model it and demonstrate it, create opportunities where congregations work together. We collectively have to do what your ministry has been doing for years. What you do overseas to reach the mission fields, the works of compassion that were already talked about earlier in this very show are part of the answers or part of the way that God would heal this thing, meaning we're going to have to have Mission Dallas, Mission Washington, D.C., 
and we're going to have to touch the least of these. My youngest daughter is a charter school counselor uh, in Washington, D.C. She also went to Harvard and smart, got two master's degrees. Wow. She's given her life to touch disadvantaged black and brown kids. But she's finding that when she goes out on a truancy case, sometimes there's a mom and a dad at home that aren't sending that kid and making that kid go to school. Sometimes the mom is living in such brokenness and addictions and problems that mm. she can't see her way to really nurture her own babies. Somebody, it's, just, it's not just the black community, but somebody from the church has got to come together and be that healing agent. And if we'll be Jesus to this world yes. as the church, then the world will come to know him. And then people get born again, get discipled. And I believe in our lifetimes, we can break this conundrum, this puzzle, where academics are different in black, white, and brown, that economics are different, black, white, and brown, that our family structures are different, black, white, and brown. This can be turned around, but only by the agency that God has put on the earth to solve these problems, the church. And how significant and appropriate that the name of your church is Hope Christian Church. Yes, sir. And really, it's the absence of hope in many of these communities that is causing this spiral to just go out of control because they feel like, well, things aren't going to change. I can't get a job. Uh, I end up in jail. If you go to jail, then you sure can't get a job. I mean, it's just a terrible situation, isn't it? It, it really is. And as you said, our middle age and above generation that came after the civil rights movement, I think we've lived in a certain amount of harmony. But as the social divide has continued to grow <clears throat> in the ghetto, the, the least, the last, and the lost in the ghetto, even at 18 and 19, they want to go out and riot. That's what you're seeing wow. in Ferguson because of that hopelessness, and we can solve it. We need more Christian schools. We need higher standards in those schools as we embrace these problems. We need to create ways like with prison fellowship and other groups are doing to win these prisoners. And the statistics show us that when somebody gets born again in prison, gets properly discipled, guess what? They don't go back. They Wonderful. go home. They get restored to their families and their lives. So the gospel at root is the answer. Yes. But we've got to build these bridges, as we're going to be talking about, to see the gospel really work on behalf of the needy. Joni? You know, and I think it is so important for the church to be willing to talk about this issue, which is a difficult issue to talk about. But as a white American, I can say some things to white people that you can't say. Yes. You can say some things to black Americans that I can't say. Yes. And so when I get on television, or we're going to do some programs on this with friends of mine who have, um, who have told me stories as black Americans of things that have happened to them if, when they've gone to stores or gas stations or malls, et cetera. That or to I, the bank. Or to the bank. Yeah. The things that I was just appalled by. I'm thinking if you'd have been treated like that, yeah. you would have what in the world is going on? The truth of the matter is, um, Bishop, is that a lot of uh, white Americans haven't experienced this or heard these stories. Mm -hmm. I know you have your own stories as well. I do. But these are some of the things that we need to talk about and I can talk about and the body of Christ should say, this is not right and it's not acceptable in the eyes of the Lord. What about that? Well, I, I think you really hit at the very crux of the issue. We live in two or three different Americas, meaning your experience of being an American and mine are very different. When you come to my neighborhood, the policeman that greets you in a ghetto situation is different than in the suburban place where I live. I'm experiencing the same kind of police force and interaction that whites do in America. But many of us uh, have got trauma, have got issues. My dad was threatened at gunpoint by a state trooper when I was one year old because he was involved in voter registration. Oh. And he carried that. And then we had race riots only about 10, 15 years ago or 10 years ago in Cincinnati, Ohio, where I was raised. And ironically, Bishop Jakes was one of the people they called in to preach and talk to pastors and leaders in their community. And he was one of the voices that helped 
African Americans calm down and kind of get in check, if you will. But I believe if we really address these problems, mm -hmm. then the church's unity can begin to bring incremental healing that really will transform our culture. Yeah. So I'm ex excited, I'm hopeful. Many, many people are involved. James Robinson, to me, is a real hero in that he's got a heart of compassion as somebody who's lived in poverty himself. You all know his testimonies. Yes. Yeah. He can identify a little bit, but even with him, he's learning some things and gaining some insights and together, it's going to take all of us, we can make a difference. Well, we only have a few seconds left in the program. I'm going to give you these uh, prayer requests to pray over, Bishop. And thank you so much for being here. We'll t we will talk yes. about this some more. All right. the, the body of Christ is going to deal with it. And, and Joni, I believe yes. that God can use this to bring thank revival. You. So yes. I'm excited Amen. about what's Amen. going to happen. Amen. Bishop, lead us in prayer. Okay. Father God, we cry out to you. Your people need you. You said if we will return to you and cry out, you would move on our behalf. Lord, many need to be healed that are in this list. Many need to be set free. God, release your mighty power. Let angelic hosts from heaven, the armies of God, energize the lives of these people. And God, we're believing for turnaround, deliverance, yes, and God. grace Hallelujah. to be ministered in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, this is on God's heart, so it should be on our heart. Pray about what you can do. Go the extra mile. Make that effort, and God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.